Sometimes we learn lessons the hard way, others the easy way, but more often than not, these lessons make a lasting impression in our minds. And having been a runner now for over eight years, I wanted to share some of the important lessons that I've picked up along the way that have helped me become the runner I am today and share them all with you. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first important lesson that I want to share with you guys is learn to understand what you're doing within the sport of running. Understand why you're training in a certain way. Ask questions, do your research, have a basic fundamental knowledge as to why you're doing what you're doing. So just if you're running for health benefits and you're just out there casually running on a daily basis, or you're looking to progress your running and pushing hard and looking to take yourself as far as you can, whichever you're doing, there's a reason that you're gonna do certain runs, you're gonna do certain training plans, and you're gonna run in a certain way, whether that's easy, whether that's hard, whether that's intervals, fartlek work, whatever it might be, understand and get yourself to a point where you have a good basic knowledge and fundamental understanding as to why you're doing what you're doing. It, in the long run, can help you make some much more informed decisions. I think at the end of the day, it's all about keeping injury free and enjoying the sport as much as we can. And those informed decisions that we can then make by having that basic fundamental knowledge is key to the progress in the sport of running. And the second really important lesson that I wanna share with you is understanding the balance of running and recovery. So a lot of us are very, very eager bunnies. We love to get out there and we love to run. And sometimes that's all we wanna do. We just wanna run. And that's a really amazing thing to be feeling, but also it can be quite a dangerous thing because it can take us closer to that edge of maybe overtraining training or just over pushing yourself whatever it might be and of course again like I was piggy well piggybacking off point number one that can obviously lead to injuries so you have that basic foundational knowledge that understanding as to why you might do what you're doing and then take that on to point number two which is all about balancing the recovery suddenly you're going to have this knowledge of right well today's an easy day so I need to recover well get my easy run done keep it nice and calm nice and relaxed and keep nice and recovered ready for my next hard session because that's when I want to be firing on all cylinders so having that good understanding of knowledge combined then with a good preparation of recovery in and around your harder sessions and your longer runs and making sure you take your easy days easy is just key once again for your long-term health in the sport. And the third important lesson that I want to share with you guys is that having a coach or a training plan is a really important part of progressing as a runner. Now, if you are running just for health purposes, and this really doesn't apply to you, but if you are in the sport for looking to progress and looking to you know, improve your PBs and looking to just generally improve as a runner, then coaches and training plans, if you have that foundational knowledge in terms of training plans, are really, really important because what they'll both do is guide you on a path of progression. They'll progress you through a training block. They'll progress you through the year if it's a long-term commitment or if it's just a short week, a short 12-week training plan, there'll be some kind of progression throughout that training plan to get you to peak, to get you to race, and then recover afterwards and then go again. And that continual cycle of just, you know, ticking off the basics, doing the easy runs, doing the recovery, having that knowledge. Uh, again, again, a benefit of a coach is being able to ask those questions. Hopefully your coach will be happy to answer them and then that will help you build that foundational knowledge we were talking about in point one. All of these things combined allow you to progress, get that goal race, have a quick rest, quick rest, have a rest and then go again, repeat the cycle and then over time you'll just continually step up that ladder. And the fourth lesson I want to share with you, quite funny because I just said have a quick rest, is to schedule in rests and breaks during your year. If you look at it as a bigger picture, have certain times where you do have a break, you do have some downtime. That doesn't necessarily mean don't run. I know a lot of people love to do run streaks and that's absolutely fine, but just put in periods of your uh, running journey throughout a 365 day cycle if you want or a six month cycle whatever it is to have a couple of weeks here and there dotted in or more if you want to just down weeks if you're on a run streak really nice and easy really low key or if you're not on a run streak just have a few days off here and there after a training block have a week off have two weeks off if it's after a marathon block whatever you want to do just make sure you pencil in those down times because I think the the misconception is around rest periods and downtime is that when you come back from a rest period, everything feels really hard, it feels really tough, and you feel like you're starting from uh, the ground up again. Now, this isn't the case. Although we feel rusty for the first few runs, and it takes, let's say, two or three weeks to get back into training again and get that good routine going, what we've done is we started the first training block at this level, and we'll be starting the next training block at this level, and then we'll be starting the next one at this level and this one, hence why you're continually stepping up the ladder. 
And as I said, you will naturally feel rusty if you haven't run for a week or so. And so the first few runs will be all over the place. Your heart rate will be a bit higher and that's natural. But when you get into training, you'll notice very quickly in week two or three that actually you are starting well ahead of where you were last time. And the fifth lesson I want to share with you guys is having a shoe rotation. That is something that was massive and a big game changer for me back in the day. I used to buy one pair of shoes uh, and I used to run in them for five, six, seven hundred miles until my shins hurt. And when my shins started hurting, that's when I knew I had to change my shoes. And that's just such a bad way of running. If, I guess, if we're in a privileged position where we can afford a shoe rotation, I really can't stress enough how important it is. And I do feel like it's very easily accessible to do that these days because there are so many models we seem to churn over running shoes so quickly that a new model might come out this year but then next year that model will be complete like less than half like a third of the price some of the nike sales and the asic sales and hoka sales and all the other brands they end up putting like end of season sales on where you can get some really good running shoes for 40 or 50 pounds or maybe 60 70 dollars it's really really affordable and you can of course get them cheaper uh, elsewhere so i've got to be honest with you i think just having two or three shoes in your rotation make the world a difference when you use a shoe one day and then you use a shoe another day and then you come back to the other one that extra time that you've stayed out of that first running shoe has allowed the foam to decompress even more when you're permanently running in a certain pair of running shoes day after day that foam is continually compressing and the break you give it in between each run isn't as much as if you gave it a break between let's say two or three days because you've got other shoes to use and it as i said allows that foam to decompress a little bit more and be a little bit fresher from when you go to it again so again it's about longer lasting shoes if you get to rotate them plus the fact that it's healthier on your legs to get them used to different drops uh, heel to toe drops and get you used to running in different weighted shoes lighter, heavier, heavier for the easy days, lighter for the speed days, and it just gets your body used to different things. And the sixth lesson that I want to share, this is such a crucial one, is we need to understand that less is more when it comes to technology. I preach about this quite a lot, but it's so important that I've learned over the years to really tune into your body and not let technology dictate how you're feeling. So in particular, over the last six to 12 months, I've been talking about how it's really important for you to go out and understand where your breathing changes within your running. So like you can understand physically where those zones are rather than going, right, well, my watch tells me my zones are here, here and here. They're always gonna be a few beats a minute out either side, uh, unless you're really, really lucky and it plots it exactly right the first time, which is very rarely the case. So understanding your body is far better than relying on a watch. So if someone said to you, right, go out and run an easy run, you know that your easy run needs to be a 4-4 breathing pattern, really relaxed, you can chat, you know if you're going to run a steady run, that you need to keep it still under that aerobic threshold or your math heart rate if that's the way you work. Um, so you're really top end of that, but you're keeping it nice and relaxed and you know that if you tip over that point, you can feel your breathing change. It's just having those basic understandings that again allows you to be more controlled in races, it gets you more in tune with your body, you can listen to other people's breathing around you, you can gain confidence from that. You can gain confidence in training because you know you're not working too hard. Your heart rate might be quite low on your monitor or your power might be whatever it is. But actually that day your body's not particularly feeling great or your body's feeling amazing and the effort doesn't feel enough or it's too much. Just go by whatever the effort is in your body. Learn it, understand it. Spend some time over the next couple of training blocks either ditching the watch or just turning the watch inside the wrist like that and just running feel your breathing, understand your breathing, and go from there. And tip number seven, I'm gonna be really careful about how I word this, is understanding how important eating is to cater for your training. I'm not gonna go into diets, I'm not gonna go into specifics, I'm just gonna say this, I think when it comes to marathon training in particular, you need to eat a lot. Uh, what we understand the basic principles of is calories in versus calories out. So we all know to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit, and we all know to gain weight, you need to increase your calories so we're eating more than we burn. It's as simple as that. There's nothing else to it. Yes, people have different metabolisms and there are other factors, genetics that come into play, but that's the basic fundamental. Now, if we're going out there in heavy marathon training and we're just eating our normal amount of food that we would do without marathon training, we're going to lose a lot of weight. And then that depends on whether you were, or you were already at a healthy weight or you want to lose weight. But it's understanding that your body can't sustain a heavy load of training if you're not putting the fuel into your body. I I've had so many training blocks 
or I've broken down halfway through because I've not eaten enough. And now I understand that when I come to do a marathon training block, I just absolutely go to town. And right now during this marathon training block at the moment, I think I've had a chippy, uh, a chippy tea every Saturday night after my week of training since week three, because for me, it's easy, dirty, big calories to get in the body. Because although I eat a lot in the week, I know I don't eat enough to sustain the type of training that I do. And it's such a weakness. You see people break down, you see people get injured, you see people feel massively fatigued they're just not putting the food in their body so again this isn't a kind of dietary you should do this you should do that it's about understanding how important it is that food is your fuel you need to get it in the tank so that you have enough fuel to train and finally i want to leave this one on a really positive one number eight the biggest lesson i've learned or one of the biggest lessons is support your local running club and support your local scene so if you're a follower of the channel you know i do so many local races uh, i know a lot of us love to train for these massive goals and these massive incredible races and they are incredible i love them don't get me wrong london marathon was one of the best experiences Experiences of my life and some of these bigger races I've done are amazing but I also understand the benefit of running in these local races these what well, these local clubs organize number one we're supporting the local clubs we're supporting the infrastructure um, of uh, running in our community we're helping build that we're helping raise awareness that this club is putting on this event and if we can do more for that then that's brilliant we want the younger generations to come through and have a thriving running community Number two, you get to make some great friends along the way. I've met so many people at running, uh, running events from different clubs that I now talk to every time. I love seeing them. It's great. It's like you just mates who catch up at a pub. It's brilliant to see. And number three, I think it's just good because there's no pressure. You know, you go out there to these local races and you can just go and have a blast. We might have these massive goal races, but these smaller events are a great opportunity to go out there, no pressure, and just absolutely lay it all out there, have some fun, and just walk away going, yeah, I gave it my all and the result was what it was rather than training for these massive events and if it goes wrong then it's a disaster if it happens in the smaller races we can learn lessons from them and take them forward into the bigger races so there we go those are eight really important lessons that i've learned as a runner having run for over eight years now that i wanted to share with you there are so many more i could have shared i probably could have shared about 100 but these is a really specific type of lessons that i've learned that i wanted to share with you guys and of course get your feedback on love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below and as always i'd love to hear your most important lessons that you've learned as a runner do leave those down there as well and share them with the running community appreciate you guys sticking around for this one thank you so much and if you enjoyed this video please do consider giving it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always i'll see you on the next one until then